Should I always be tolerant? Hi Bhante, I am a Buddhist starter. The renovate worker next to my room works until midnight every day and plays loud music. I talked to them many times but they didn't listen. Should Buddhists be always tolerant? It's not really the most important thing to ask, should Buddhists always be tolerant? Obviously that's what most people would ask. But just to point out that let's approach this from the point of view of what's really going to benefit me. I mean, obviously this isn't benefiting you. Talking to them, being intolerant. Uh, and I would say anybody who wants to be happy should be tolerant because intolerance... Um, and, and there's going to be a provi proviso on here, there's a qualifier here, but, but for the most, in general, tolerance is always going to make you happier. It's always going to bring you more peace than intolerance. Now, um, there's a point where intolerance becomes delusion, where you, you, it actually is the covering up of your inclination to change things. So, there's many cases of that. Tolerance of your own faults, Tolerance of evil, in the sense of of condoning it, you know, when you have a chance to help someone, to to even just to advise someone. So you see someone doing something that's going to cause them suffering, and right away there should be the inclination in a good person to help them, to want to help them to see and help them to become better people. But by quashing that and and by tolerating their evil. At times, you know, at least when it's your place to say something, like if it's your children, parents who indulge their children and allow them to do whatever they want or let them explore, that's fine. If they want to do drugs or whatever, let them explore. If they want to get drunk and so on and so on. Um, of course, there are times where you can't control other people, but there are times where you would just, um, I mean, just let it go and, and, and it's not even letting it go because there is the inclination to help in, in a clear mind there will be the natural inclination to do something about it it's the correct thing to do the correct response and by quashing that which many people many people I think confuse with true Buddhist practice they say well you should just let it go but you're not really letting it go because there's the inclination the default is the inclination to help the inclination to engage which is natural human beings are engaged with each other we're, we're a part of the universe to be detached is not really Buddhist. We're, we're, we're part of the process. There is an engagement there, which I think is quite crucial and many Buddhists don't realize. That's not what you're asking. Obviously, it's not your place to help these people overcome their uh, music addiction. Uh, if you were the landlord, it would be your place to tell them to quiet down for the neighbors, for example. But... Um, Certainly loud music should not bother your, your, your sleeping, should not bother your life. This is something that absolutely you should meditate on and cultivate tolerance and equanimity and understand that it's just sound. Obviously, we're conditioned against that in, in the West, in Europe, in Canada, in Europe and North America. We're conditioned to expect things from other people. We're conditioned to expect quiet and so on. If you go to Thailand, it's quite an eye-opener and it's humbling. Because the things they tolerate there, it's amazing. In our monastery, there would be two weeks out of every year, two solid weeks, where basically 24-7 they would have music blaring into the monastery, like really loudspeakers up on the stage. I don't know, maybe not during the day. Yeah, I think it was basically 24-7, like really 24 hours a day, loud music. I, and I can't remember, it may stop somewhere in the early morning and pick up in the morning, but it just seemed like impossible. How could you possibly meditate through this? But Thai people were unfazed by it, and so they meditate, it's like, it's not really a problem. Or they were less phased by it. And in general, the, the amount of noise that people in Asia put up with. So it really is just a, a problem of, of the highly developed um, and, and privileged world. The the um, the imperial world, the people who, who went and conquered the rest of the world and got really rich off of it because we expect something that is unreasonable. We expect to be treated like a royalty, so we expect others to respect us. I mean, this is not obviously what you're, you're, you're going through your mind, but it's, it's, it's ingrained in us. So we have these expectations that 
that, um, well, if nothing else, are harmful, are causing us suffering. Without your expectations, it's probably a lot easier to bear people around you blaring their loud music. And so I would work very much on your expectations and, and on your, your views and come to see that it's really just a cultural thing where we, we require things from other people like quiet and, and civility and, and mm, we expect them to, uh, we expect, as the Buddha said, speech at the right time, speech that is polite, we expect speech that, speech that is truthful, speech that is beneficial, but he said, you, 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 you're always going to have speech that is unbeneficial, speech that is harmful and so on. You're always going to have things that disappoint you. So it's like, I think Milarepa was the one who said, if, you're, if, the, if, the, um, earth is, if the whole earth was covered in glass, broken glass, you have two choices. One, you can uh, cover the whole world with leather, or two, you can wear sandals. And where the, the, the metaphor kind of breaks down because we're not trying to cover up the problem, but we're trying to change ourselves. It's, it's clear what he's saying is, you have two choices. Change the world, make the world so it's always as you would have it, or change yourself so that you can deal with it. Because in the end, I mean, think of what some people in the world deal with. Um, people, there are people in the world who deal with starvation, who deal with um, the constant threat uh, to their own, to their very survival from uh, military or, or or corruption or or disease or or famine. And uh, so the the it's quite clear that we're just dealing with our own um, expectations that are un actually unreasonable. If we, and the point being that that any of these things can come to us at any time. So if you're always expecting something from the world around you, you're always vulnerable. The only way to be invincible is to have no faults, to have to have no hooks. Where if this, then that. If if this comes, then I react. So to to where you no longer react to the vicissitudes of life.